Hello everyone and welcome to The Benefactor at Chaotic Neutral Games. I'm Simon, your DM for tonight, as we join Nick, Corinne, Felicia, Kate and Rodrigo with their adventures in Illyria. Don't forget that you can help or indeed hinder by using your channel points. Check out the options in the chat bar below and you can help us with what we do on our 100th episode by becoming a subscriber. So let's rejoin their players as they play episode 100 of The Benefactor. And welcome back and hello to our players for our 100th episode. Hello. Yay. Hello. Who would have thought when I grabbed hold of three people well, who I'd never met before <laughs> to uh, join uh, myself, uh, Corinne and Felicia, uh, that we would get this far and uh, with a uh, much grown community as well and uh, plenty of other stories and uh, adventures both under our belt and on their way as well. So uh, very pleased with that. And um, we are... Uh, kicking off 2021, uh, we had a meeting uh, this Saturday just gone. I think it was this Saturday. Yeah, it was uh, Saturday. 
uh, that yeah. uh, we started talking to our two uh, new regular DMs, one of which is here, Rodrigo. Uh, oh, me? Going to be having. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. You better okay. get right, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for question. Blades in the Dark, uh, which I'm hugely looking forward to. And I think it's possible that we've got Christy in as well. And considering yeah. the rat bag she played, in Numenera. Oh, I it's going to be fucking wait. hilarious. Yeah. It's going to be hilarious. Um, so uh, there's that. And then we have Ed's Numenera game uh, that's coming in, which is the Odyssey. So uh, looking forward to that as well. Uh, we've been treated to some of Ed's uh, Numenera in the past, and uh, it's clear that he knows the system. He's actually on the uh, Monte Cook um, uh, kind of beta asset team. Um, so uh, yeah, he, kn he knows it quite heavily. And uh, my only really regret cool. is that I haven't got more days in the week to play more games. So yeah, mm. uh, this is fantastic. You guys have also leveled. So yes. you're all level 13. Now, yeah, not I've, that it'll apply much. To totally, we've already done that. Yep, yeah. yeah, already done it. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I have. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, oh. yeah, ha we did remind everybody just before the stream. Oh, not so, that it's yeah. a problem. Oh, thanks, thank Nike. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so um, much. 500, thank you. So yeah, we, uh, uh, you guys have got uh, a few extra tricks up your sleeve. Um, and you're not really going to need them for this episode because this episode, um, I've written nothing. I have nothing in front of me here, just my keyboard. Um, cool. I have a few things that I have in the back of my head that can happen. But for <laughs> the most part, we are going to um, come back to you guys in a ghost town um with 40 freshly dug graves um that i are... would like to start this with that fact that glory managed to dig one of them and yes. then she came to the realization that eclipse will probably make her do this again so she's gonna uh, take one of the shovels and mm -hmm. basically start enchanting it so it can dig it uh, the grave by itself <laughs> You know, I mean, that's going to take longer even, than actually doing the grave. You're not even like halfway through in that. There's a good chance that Farewell's just come along and dug the damn thing for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, definitely, Snipe. There's definitely some sort of blister that is being acted like it's a death leech or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she is whining so much about it. One so, blister what is this? I've got a bubble on me. What is this? It, it's not oh, even a oh. nice bubble. It's not even pretty. She just drops the spade and goes, the damn thing bit me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I was going to imagine like she gets one blister. <laughs> yeah, like she gets one blister and she thinks that she only has like three days to live or something. Yeah. Uh, uh, or when she gets the splinter, she, it's like she just immediately faints on zero hit points because she is a sorcerer after Actually all. thinking yeah. about it, this is, um, <laughs> this is Glory and she goes, why have I got one of these? Acid causes these. Mm, I yes. cause these. Why have I got one of these? <laughs> it's hard work. <laughs> it's clearly bad for you. <laughs> Clearly bad for you. Farewell, you need to fix this. I want to um, imagine. <laughs> have you seen the fucking um, Tom from Tom and Jerry with the fucking newspaper? <laughs> just just look, look, looking. That's yeah. basically Iden's permanent reaction to this entire shenanigan. Yeah. Yeah. I look up over, over my prayer book. Don't you fucking start. <laughs> back down to my back down to the book finish everything off give her the best part of the rest of the day to get it done still isn't done by the time the sun starts setting she's yep. immediately sent off back to the caravan farewell we'll finish the work finish no the no do not let her get away with it let her keep going she gets she is done i don't like it when mommy and daddy fight <laughs> <laughs> No, she needs to learn her lesson and do it herself. She is done when she is done. <laughs> um, <laughs> one small point. In the middle of your ritual, you turn around saying, don't you fucking start. Ordinarily, you know that speaking out of turn in a ritual can break the ritual, but you're pretty <laughs> certain that the Raven Queen would agree with you. And sure enough, the ritual does not break. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you, you stay in your corner and keep digging. Yeah. 
no, but all seriousness, th- there's a good chance that Farewell ends up finishing it because yeah. there's no way yeah. on earth he's, he's going to be out there no, all fucking absolutely night. absolutely fucking not. <laughs> looks I mean, at, the, looks at the uneven bottom of the hole and go, what are we burying a Modron? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is though, it is it is like deep, but it's only like two foot wide. Yeah. And there's yes. like you know, it's like where's the rest of it? <laughs> Did you need it a hole? There is a hole. Yes. We don't bury them standing up. <laughs> <laughs> Posting them like a letterbox. Yeah. It's just like Why not? it's it's just more melt efficient. them and I'll fit. <laughs> it's the it saves Dork. space. If you think about it, you can stack more of them up. Which tells you a lot about Atoll Zoran culture. Actually, yeah. Yeah. they, they the... would be more like I see cremation as being the you only do that because it saves space and it fertilizes the flowers. Uh, no, I, I like to like to imagine that as soon as she goes, you just melt the and Iden has to go. Okay, I can't believe I have to say I, I'm doing this. Glory, let me explain you something called desecration. <laughs> 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 yeah, we just use our dead um, um, to make the flowers pretty. They love it. I'm not hearing this. I'm um, not hearing there is, this. There is a I'm rat, not hearing this. A rat, well, a goat, and a lion helping out digging, just fields. so you know. Mother's <laughs> favorite uh, uh, garden has these... Uh, and the rat has done more than glory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, two, there's two animals that have actually dug deeper and wider pit than glory yeah. has. They've started on the other yeah. end of the of the plot and yeah. they've got further along in about 25 minutes than uh, she has but... in four and a half I mean, hours. I mean, like, why don't we have, like, one of mom's, uh, my mother's plants? Like, they eat the corpses for her. Your experiences are not universal. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, to like, go I'm literally... I, I thought you would have learned this by now, Glory. Your experiences are fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> we do not judge other no people's cultural cultures tolerances. in such way, but in uh, this one, we will. you don't get a bye. <laughs> <laughs> Grab a dictionary and look at the, like, the definition of desecration or to, or to desecrate. <laughs> because that's basically what you want to do. I'm just Great. saying that it's a verb. <laughs> yeah. There's a picture. There's just this little picture of this jaunty little like imp dancing up and down on a grave. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. It's like the super dictionary. Them even in my dish, my dish they're serving a greater purpose. <laughs> A, B, C is for uh, lawful evil characters. D is for desecration. <laughs> I just wanted to say, it's like the, like, I, I like to imagine, like, have you, do you guys know what the super dictionary is? Yeah. Yeah, so the super dictionary, but like, it's for like blood hunters or some shit like that. <laughs> I, I, have, I love the idea case. that Aiden actually has a dictionary with pictures in it because it's a universal way of teaching words to people that can't read. So mm-hmm. it will have things like lich. A dead body. Noun. <laughs> lich. And then it's got a picture of this weird skeleton guy in like a robe going, ah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like, lich. <laughs> Turns the page. <laughs> and then it's got. There like, will be a lich. test. <laughs> there will be a test on it. There will be a test. <laughs> yeah. Right. I really like, don't understand you guys' like certification. It's like, it's like burn yeah. zombie burn. <laughs> we have like, one zombie. One zombie. We have two zombies. Two zombies. <laughs> How many zombies do we need to burn? <laughs> <laughs> if you you just one zombie, well, that's, <laughs> while I understand the need to burn the zombies, that is a very good thing. When do you guys learn your or, uh, like ancestry tree? Like, when is the important stuff coming into you guys' uh, education? I'm confused. Don't know. Don't care. <laughs> I mean, most of mine is technically wiped out. Hmm, I suppose. Uh, but it, I mean, if you if you want to be specific, I mean, you did just spend like a several weeks inside of it. It's on all of the walls. It's in the mm. books. It's there. Yes, it's yes. taught. Yeah, but like, don't you guys have like the thing of being able to tell it? each and every single person you are related to in some level and how no. that comes 
No. And I doubt own? your slaves do it, that knows it either. Yeah, yeah. But they're not important enough to have we, that sort of we information. We got back here already. Oh. Okay, <laughs> Dory, moving again, on. We are not important enough to know that either. If that's the, what the level you want to put us at. You know, it's really hard to keep richly casting when you're all so loud. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly, the ritual kind of Boris boosts is riding slightly. The, right now. <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole ground shakes. It's not only not only is like I'm annoyed, but so are the gods themselves. The Raven Queen. I can doing imagine STFU through the ground. I can no, I can imagine like the Raven Queen also reading a newspaper from up high, just going, "Get on with it." <laughs> <laughs> You're the one. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's that conversation. Yes, I know this is taking a while, but you're the one that made this spell only work on one individual, and it takes an hour. Next time, think of the multi-person. It was a poetic <laughs> moment. She was trying to express herself. Don't rain on her parade. Yes, okay. it's a hugely inefficient spell that must take close to a week to do a battlefield. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Fuck. yeah. Unless you got yeah. several priests. <laughs> yeah, which is uh, which even then, still got like an army tend... of priests doing two days, you know, that's crazy. Mm. Um, but even then, that's probably why they don't do it, and which is why sites of battlefields usually have a lot yeah, of dead Yeah, that's why, like, around. like Aiden, Aiden and his people have to like every time there's a battle, there's like, okay, time to do time to do cleanup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, so it keeps us gamefully employed at least. What are you guys doing? We do know some of the things you're doing before sunset. Uh, the stuff that Farewell is doing. Uh, that takes you easily till sunset. Yep. Um, uh, I think we said for most people we know what they are. Is, has anybody not kind of said what they're doing before we get to dusk? Dusk being significant really. for a few of the characters. No. Uh, uh, we've been... I mean... Um... After managed to get someone else to do uh, her work, we well, will start a... looking around if there's anything that we might want to bring with us, such in food supplies, since we know we'll be on the road for a while. We could at least stock out. You can stuff. fill your boots with food supplies here. And I want to see if the tavern have any nice uh, drinks that we can bring. <laughs> just drink like... the cider. <laughs> uh, well, the, the, I mean, he clearly pulled the cider out and poisoned it in front of you. So unless you're stupid enough to drink the cider, um, which yeah, I just gonna uh, want some coffee. Besides, yeah, I was uh, just gonna collect the bottles and then have a uh, farewell purify them because he can do that. Uh, yes, actually, fair. I can uh, do that tomorrow. Can. Tomorrow, <laughs> yes, he, he tomorrow, can make the cider well. drinkable again tomorrow. Um, but yes, uh, I have mentioned before that if you go inside the tavern, um, there is um, a good mountain spirit, which is kind of a whiskey. There is genuine dwarven whiskey. There are some uh, choice bottles of elven wines. With your background, you're able to determine uh, straight away the classier stuff. Yes. Um, so the, the Dwarven whiskey is top-notch stuff. Mm. Uh, the Elven wines are fully acceptable. Um, the Mountain Spirit is... No. It's kind of pachin. Don't get me wrong, it's good stuff, but it's what the young nobles would drink to just show how badass they are. Uh, yeah, somebody no. might like it, but it is horrendously strong. Um, and to could... the point where there is a check if you haven't got a high enough constitution score. Yeah. Um, there's okay. um, some uh, lighter things, kind of like gins, brandies, um, uh, kind of uh, what would be called a, a honey liquor. Uh, so it's kind of like a, a, a hard mead. Uh, you wouldn't drink much of it at any one point. For one thing, you wouldn't be able to take that much sugar, never mind the alcohol. Um, and yeah, so th there's a few things in there. It's It seems to be uh, a very well-to-do bar. In fact, if you came to this village you probably would think this is either the pride of the village or you'd kind of go, that's off. Right. Why would a bunch of bum bumpkins have such a good... Um, uh, and we kind of did. Yeah. 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 And, uh, like, one of the things is, like, we could look and see if they have any stuff left from... Because these were people who have been the same people sent... Well, Jordan's reign, they might have some form of antiquities for Eclipse to bring back. I think she'd prefer if they were in good hands. Yes. Uh, yes, actually, if they have any, like, sort of, if they've kept anything from the fall, as in, like, any, like, 
specifically if there's any sort of like family names I recognize from the Narukan? Um, so none of that. Uh, there are some things that you do find. You've got high enough investigation that you don't even roll at the moment because you have 29. Um, <laughs> so you get, uh, you do notice that there are a few things that uh, are from ancient Nukan culture. Um, so uh, the first is an icon. Uh, the icon uh, would normally be, uh, it would normally be on the forehead, uh, which uh, would kind of hang down on a human but on a tabaxi because of the elongated face would just kind of sit uh, sit there and then it has a kind of a weighted beaded um uh string i guess that goes up and over the ears and has kind of like a pair of decorative weights that come down uh and it would just it's not something that you would wear whilst you're working or anything like that It'd fall off in a heartbeat but it's something that just balanced on the head would normally be um at uh, religious rituals um, and also things like uh, pageants and um, formal meetings where people would be in congress with each other. Uh, so they would be in a um, uh, they would be in like a, a an auditorium or something like that. These would adorn the face. Uh, typically, they would be uh, some kind of family design you do notice those and you're pretty sure that those uh would be of historical significance in the um uh in the temple um or just for anybody in fact um if you were to take it back to garrick he chances are he would be over the moon to see these the yeah. other thing you uh notice Let's put it on it looks so pretty on you uh. typically one mm. would never put one on belonging to somebody else's yeah. family unless yeah. they mm -hmm. had become a member of that family. Yeah. These are not my families. <laughs> uh, I suppose. These are, these belong to other, I recognize some of them. Yeah. Uh, some of them are shaped soapstone. Some of them are uh, precious metals. Some of them are like a, a shaped gem. Um, beautiful. Um, that's kind of the most common Narukan thing you can see. Uh, the other thing that you find is uh, you do see some braids. Um, braids are uh, typically um, for maned tabaxi and uh, to braid something in the main um, is to make a promise mm. uh, because normally you would not put anything in your main. It's your main. It's, you, it's yours. Mm. Uh, to interrupt the glory of you know the uh, 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 of your your mantle your mane um, is to show humility. Um, from that, the Narukans uh, have a thing which is a kind of a promise braid. Um, if you don't have a mane, obviously you can't put it in there. So that what they do is that instead of braiding um, the material into a mane, you'd normally braid just make a braid of material, um, and you'd normally wear it somewhere on your belt or somewhere prominent. Uh, because you're showing the same humility. Uh, there are braids for contrition. So um, the, a braid could say, I still feel the guilt of what I have done to my friend, for example. Uh, a braid could be, I remember um, a former partner who has died. It could be, um, I shall keep my promise um, to my father and to my death or until it's completed at which point you would probably take the braid off because you've completed the promise um but you may wish to keep it on just to say uh, and if anyone asks you, know, you 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 carry a promise and say uh now i carry the memory of a promise and maybe you'd alter it maybe you'd put like a bit of gold at the end like gold coin or a trinket or something like that maybe to show that it's complete um you do uh see quite a few of these braids um, the, none of them were on the characters themselves, on the pe uh, people themselves, uh, but they are kept prominently in the homes. And it seems that they've put them up on the wall instead of carrying them. Uh, presumably because they've been there for so long, each of the houses becomes part of them. There's their den or something. And to have it and to show it means that when you uh, have someone come into your home, they can see 
the promise mm -hmm. is still there or you still feel the guilt or whatever um, mm -hmm. it, it uh, declares um, so yes that's all you find you don't find any other reference to Narukans at this point Felicia you have found easily about 60 golds worth of spirits and wines um i don't care about most of it i just want some nice stuff for us uh, uh, while we travel yeah i mean it, you you could set up a pretty good mini bar in farewell's caravan it's uh yeah yeah a uh, little, little bit of class you know it's mm -hmm. uh you know setting standards darling um so yeah you, you you're pretty sure that you can uh, tick that off the list of the number of things to make his uh, caravan a, um, a suitable abode. So... I imagine we like, uh, since we got them to make us furniture and stuff, now we have like our main living room and just yeah. making a shelf in there with the, uh, some <laughs> drinks and stuff. <laughs> because I knew one of the possibilities of what was going to happen um, with this, I was like, Glory's making them spend their last day making her furniture. Oh. Yep. <laughs> But then again, you didn't know what was going to happen. So, uh, yeah, uh, you do see that set to one side is some perfectly serviceable furniture. It's not decorative, but it is well made, sturdy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, as dusk starts to approach, um, you guys uh, put together a simple meal. There's plenty of... Um, facilities to cook, tavern being the best one. And um, yeah, you sit down in the tavern, a little awkward, sitting down in a tavern, enjoying the fair without the owner of the tavern present. It just Feels doesn't really feel right. Empty. Yeah. Um, and exhausted, but refreshed by the food. Um, you guys have a good opportunity to talk. So, where to now? Well, we have a lich to catch, don't we? We sure do. Sure Wasn't do. Wasn't the mine you wanted to look into on the way there? Uh, um, if I, we can take that to the way back because I think the mm. lich is slightly more important. <laughs> I will, yeah, I would really like to not have a lich running around. Of course. Yeah, I mean, let's just go deal with that. Um, how far away is the... We know roughly what direction it is, thanks to Korra, but like, well, how far away is it? Don't think I know that. I take I out know. a map. I'm wrong. You know the direction... <laughs> I can't remember if I said that you know the distance. Uh, but yes, you have a direction mm -hmm. that's going in, and if you confirm that with... Um, Eclipse. Eclipse will confirm that that is roughly in the direction. I mean, it's not a direct line, but it's it's in the vicinity of yeah, I, um, uh, the abandoned mine. So what I do is I, I take the map out, put it on the table, mark out where the, the mine is. How long would it take us to get from where we are to the mine? Uh, if you're using a caravan, um, it's probably going to take you about two weeks. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the lich is further than that. Yeah. Yeah. The lich are probably talking around about, uh, I'd say, just shy of 20 days. Damn. Yeah, 18, 19 days to get there. So. I was going to ask, by the way, is just remind me because it's been a while. And. Um, <clears throat> The lich is not, it's sit, It's just sitting in one place. It's not moving around, right? No, it's hunting. Yeah. Um, give I, me... My memory is bad, so. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Now, give me, uh, you're better at this now with your intelligence. Give me an intelligence with proficiency. This is a memory check. Hunter's Bane? Uh, yes, in this case. Okay. I mean, uh, I could that's... potentially bring us closer, but uh, I don't know any of the circles 23. nearby. At 23, yes, you can confirm that you know 
what you'd probably describe as a hunting ground. Okay. It's not stationary. Is there a pattern of like places he has moved? Bear in mind, all you get is that the compass moves, and it sometimes feels closer and sometimes further away. You, right. You can't track a pattern on a map. Damn. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So. Simon, is there any major settlements near the mine or within, sort of, say, a few days of it? Um, yes. Near uh, the mine, within three days of the mine, uh, you are talking about Co uh, Covenhead. Covenhead is a dwarven uh, underground city. Could head there. Teleport. Actually... Go on. Simon, so you said that the lich is not stationary, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's hunting. Mm -hmm. Can I then sort of with that information deduce because I don't think a lich that is doing that is going to carry out, carry its phylactery with it. Um, no, that would be that would be stupid. Yeah, that would be stupid. Would. Yeah, uh, so the phylactery would be somewhere else. Exactly. If, and I will uh, I will refresh you from the notes if this creature is indeed a lich. Yeah. So far, we you've referred to it as a lich a few times. A it's a greater undead that looks very lich-like. So okay. if you were to make a guess, sure, keep going on the basis that this is probably a lich. Um, but you have heard it only referred to as the Witch Queen. Mm. Okay. Right, the Witch Queen. Um, okay. All right. Because that makes it, like, if it is a lich, which means we need to find a phyl its phylactery, it's actually a lot more complicated, because if, even if we do manage to find it, we're not going to be able to do jack shit to it unless we take care of its phylactery. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. But. Didn't you say you knew where it came from? The village or well town. You said it was the wife of a king or something. Right. Yeah. Uh, it was the wife of a queen, scorned. A uh, bunch of bad shit happened. I don't remember. <laughs> like uh, this is notes from a while back that I don't yeah. no longer have. So. Uh, yep. Yeah. So uh, you got most of it. Yeah. Uh, this was a um, a. First of all, a reluctant queen, arranged marriage, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, ready to do her noble duty. Mm -hmm. um, she, um, uh, well, I, I say her noble duty. She was always a witch. Um, she had, uh, her family was kind of semi-noble. She, um, as in they, they had kind of lineage, but no direct lineage. Um, and so the, um, uh, she en uh, ended up catching the eye of the king. The king fell in love with her. Uh, she was hiding what she was because no king could, um, uh, could uh, be with a witch. When um, they had got together and things, she she told that well. So when they got married and and she trusted that he wouldn't judge her, um, she did tell him that she, uh, well, she told him that she was connected to the spirits. Effectively, told him that she was a witch. He said it wasn't a problem. Um, years later, uh, he ended up um, losing favor from her and. Um, some of his advisors had caught on to the fact that she may be a witch, started poisoning the king's mind against her, um, and he ended up taking a mistress, and she lost control, right. uh, control of her powers, killed him, and most of the people in the kingdom as well. It was just one of these small kingdoms, this little, Does little, it say how little Arendelle be... thing, kind of, right, right. what we're talking about. Uh, and, it doesn't yeah, mention how she the city. became but it doesn't mention how and or why she became an undead. It just says, yeah, she kind of nuked the city, right? Um, yeah. The, the general gist of the book was that the level of sin 
um, and the shredding of her soul um, as she did this meant that uh, she was no longer able to rejoin the Cascade. She was powerful enough to be able to remain within her body, even though her body had expired. She no longer had the gift of life, but neither was she going to succumb to death. Okay. All right. That does answer a few questions. Okay. So she's not really a lich. She's lich-like, but she's not. Okay. Could so be a we, lich. we can. Could be. She could be. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So yeah, Aiden just relays this to the entire yeah. group. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the TLDR of liches is, is that they are powerful uh, magic casters who effectively pluck out their heart at the moment of their death um, and keep their soul in their phylactery so that uh, it can't be claimed by the gods. Mm. They are, well, I think, one of the few willing undeads. Yeah, probably the only... Yeah, although other people can turn you into a lich as well. Uh, sure. There, there is a uh, well. What it, what in Illyria is known as an animatus. Uh, animatus is basically a Muggle uh, lich. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, this is the info that Iden just relates to the group. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we could uh, do Renaissance in where she came from, like if we know the city or such where she lived. But then again, that might not be fast enough if she's hunting you guys wanted to stalk her that is true we don't really have time to spend well as farewell said there's a uh, dwarven settlement close by i could probably take us back to ostergold and if we utilize the uh, university's magic circle we should be able to get there quicker assuming the city has a magic circle not all of them do yeah. Whatever's quickest. Oh, we just start going. Well, we can from here make inquiries to find out whether or not it does have a circle. If it doesn't, then we know the answer. If it does, next village is about a day and a half. I think I said. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, like a day and a half away. You said. Yeah. Uh, Normal village. Yeah. I mean, with a fast horse, you could get there within the day. Yeah. Uh, but by car, I'm giving you all the caravan time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Could we, we were talking I about the war when one, I think, closer to the mine. But let's just, we should probably get on the road either way. This is a one yeah, horse agree. caravan, isn't it? Uh, yes, there's. Uh, uh, no, actually, you've got a pair of horses on this caravan. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, uh, but you did say last week, uh, that you would uh, stock up, rather than letting all the food spoil, that you would stock up um, a bunch oh, yeah. of carts, make a caravan, and take it to the next village anyway. We, yeah, well, we, we did it. That then was we the called, idea, um, but then Renata, we asked so was... Renata to like send word at this village. That's right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think if we know we're heading towards a village, we'll probably bring extra stuff and drop them yeah. off with us, and then yeah. we yeah, can pass true. the message along. Mixed cars, everyone. yeah. 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 But um, unless it will slow us down, though. I know I wondered whether or not we could hitch any extra horses and speed ourselves up a little bit. Um, but... There weren't any horses that we saw in the village. We only saw oh, yeah, livestock. The, the, uh, livestock. Horses. There are horses. Yeah. Uh, if okay. you if you investigate, there are horses. Um, okay. Yeah. They would they would have. But I think some... we only yeah. had a pair of horses because that would be more convenient for the caravan because of yeah. how it's built. But we could yeah. potentially like hitch some front potentially. I don't know. Do any of you have proficiency land vehicle? Oh. Uh, <laughs> no. Simon, that, that doesn't Why exist. Why would I have that? That's for servants. I, don't uh, I thought it did because the. Yeah, I think you. It. Yeah, Folk Hero does have it. Yeah, I remember oh, that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, how oh, it uh, must be a feat then, rather than. Uh, it's a feat. It must be then. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, you can get proficiency sea vehicle and proficiency land vehicle. Um, Hold on. Uh, and it, it's never something comes that up. it almost always comes up, up in the background. Manage feats. Yeah. Uh, not in land vehicle. It's um, not actually, L for land vehicle. <laughs> thinking, thinking about it, actually, uh, Farewell's background. He's he's been hitching horses to caravans his entire life. Uh, right. So uh, you would have a proficiency in this. 
as part of your background. Yeah, I, um, I can't see one as a, a feat I can take or proficiency I could. Um, yeah, I think it's one yes. of those things where they added it to the book, but then they didn't really kind of decide what they were going to do with it beyond that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would say, okay, I'm, I'm going to allow that Farewell uh, could hitch four horses together. Um, but a coach and four is a difficult thing to do. Uh, but he could probably do it. Yeah, I've got pretty good animal handling as well. So, yeah, it would require yeah, animal just... handling. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't like, also, um, I was wondering, like, because we've been, this literally, this witch queen yeah. has been around for a little bit, as in the last time we experienced her. It's been a at least a week, I would have said, if not more. About two weeks. Uh, about two weeks. So we've, here. we've already, like, had a delay. It's not like, oh, my God, we got to go after this instantly. Yeah. So we, we're we not like, oh, she's about to attack something. At least knowledge-wise, we have no idea. Yeah, from what we you've had before, we've got to get it's on with it, essentially. The, yeah, the, the Witch Queen isn't marauding across the landscape, taking out everything in her path. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you and the Summer Court have managed to get the few times that the Witch Queen has exposed herself um, in order to do something specific. You saw her um, uh, tearing apart livestock and, and that yeah. to regenerate. Um, and gave you a clue yeah. to it all uh, when you when you scribed for it um, by getting that. Um, so yeah, you you have the uh, you have the knowledge that she can tear apart. Well, I'll put it in kind of mage terms. She can tear apart life patterns to regenerate her own body, uh, normally by um, taking the flesh into her own form. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, so so yeah. So we're not. Um... We potentially have the time to kind of like trudge along a little bit um, and track her, but we need to. Is she on this plane? I can't remember that. Sorry. Yes, she's on the plane. Yeah, plane. She is on this plane. So we're like, so we, I would know, even if I don't know if she's heading away from us or towards us, I would at least get a gauge of if we're like, wait, she's going yeah. that way, she's going that way. So that we and you do know, her. I'll remind you that uh, she has not been heard of other than in song and story. In a very long time. So she's pretty she, old. She w went to ground or was Yeah, so like why she's come back is an interesting She's one. back. And not only that, um, I think it's enough at this point to say that some of the things that you've heard and you've seen show a general increase in supernatural activity and other planar influence in uh, the material world. Either this has been hidden from you it's been going on, but it's been hidden from you, or it's on the increase. Yeah, but the fact that she's it's hidden from it, like I think stories of like this strange creature roaming the the land would come, would spread yeah. pretty quickly. The fact that it's only a sort of dream thing is like what it like either she has the power to like um, mask herself essentially from mm -hmm. people's minds, yeah. or um, well, yeah, no. bad things happen to people. They won't be able to know what happened. If, for example, people just find a family that lives in the woods eviscerated, yeah, sure. they will they will think goblins, they will think orcs, they will think a lot of things before they think of a, a specific thing. It's yes. only if you no end up getting signs. someone with an arcane ability to be able to maybe look at a place and have the spirits touch and be able to look back in time uh to be able to investigate down to that level so sure. it's possible that she's just been careful up until now i guess and, yeah okay cool and sorry one more thing and the so the summer the summer court are currently kind of on the hunt for her as well right this they're is dream sort of hunting. track yeah. they're, they're trying to track her as well yeah. okay so i'm and i can really i can talk to them at least at night or n have a nap and go and try and yeah. Uh, talk to them and stuff, you know. So, in yeah. in theory, we can keep track of certain stuff, and if things escalate, we can definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they are trying to yeah. find out what she's up to, trying to gain information about her. Uh, they can probably track her current whereabouts quite well if they suddenly erupt into the uh, the prime material plane and just start tromping across the land. Uh, but they know that uh, su a sudden fey invasion of Mundus would not be. Um, well received by the local uh, no, lord. Probably not. 
Um, and uh, yeah, and it would blow their cover as well. So they are, you know, they're, they're hunting, but they're hunting uh, spectacularly in the Feywild. In the Feywild, there's pageantry and uh, someone I'm sure is blowing a bugle very, you know, annoyingly. And, you oh, know, yeah. there's a lot of that they're stuff going on. Clearly. Um, but they are doing it intelligently in that they are dream hunting and trying to zero in on to when they, sh they can erupt at ground zero and just go in on the attack. Um, so, you know, that they are, they're loud and proud in the Feywild, but they're not stupid. They know how to hunt. Yep. Um, and yeah, so okay. um, you also know that Fey get we uh, true Fey, Arcadian Fey, uh, do get weaker the longer they are in the Prime Material Plane. Right. Uh, they uh, need to find ways to uh, sustain themselves. And the intensity that they require that normally comes from the Feywild itself in Mundus would normally drive everyone around them that's not from the Feywild mad. So, yeah, uh, you're now hotwired to be able to survive being around them. Okay. Yeah. I'm already okay. mad. <laughs> cool. We're all mad here. I'm all mad uh, here. <laughs> okay, awesome. Cool, thanks. Uh, I just wanted yeah. to get my head on where yeah. Cora was at and with all this. Okay. You apologize. Don't apologize. That's what this. this... Sure. I'm episode. sorry that and, and, and I'm any not episode is about if you want to have to ask yeah you, if right? you want to catch up on on the actual story you know God, don't apologize for that yeah um so yeah cool that, okay. that's where you are with that I will I will obviously any of this uh, I've made sure I've relayed to everyone I think yeah I'm, I'm kind of meta scening that that when you when you when you're talking about this and mm -hmm. going over the things that you're kind of going, mulling wait, over it with everybody was, at the we've table been waiting three yeah exactly that yeah whole, yeah was part of a yeah. conversation. This but is over bread, so meat, cheese, wine. You know, it's oh good yeah, thing. like Cora is definitely stuffing her face while talking about yeah. all this. <laughs> it's half said through cookies. Her, 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 that guy. Her, she's not gonna go everywhere. She's just like she's moved slightly. Okay. She's like... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Anything else? Any anything else? Oh, either about this or other things that you'd like to talk to each other about? It's starting to get a little bit late. Dusk hasn't quite fallen, but it's been a very physical day. You fought with something that you know, <laughs> a couple of the times nearly tore you your friend apart. Um, so th there's heavy emotional. Eclipse did all the there. damage, and um, Iden took all the damage. <laughs> I did some really good damage as well. I, I did, um, did some damage yeah. as well. Uh, uh, but yes, yeah, so what are you guys? What of the least amount of damage? But Which this I'm is sure kind of an important thing. As you're starting to get tired, some of you feel like shit. I may even be asleep before dusk. What the hell? Um, what is the most foremost thing on your minds? And I'm going to go around the table on this. Foremost thing on your minds, and I'm going to go first with Nick. Dun 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 For the sake of not getting us copyright strike, I, I won't actually use the uh, Eurythmic Seat Dream th thing uh, <laughs> song and, and dancing bears, um, which I think, no. <laughs> I think for Farewell, the biggest thing that's going through his head is Despite the profound sadness of all of this, it was kind of nice that he got to do the old farewell things. There wasn't, a, it wasn't universe ending or plane ending. It wasn't death and destruction in a in a great cataclysmic fight, to a degree. Um, it was wholesome. <laughs> yeah. Feels wholesome to just be it doing feel, it was... great cleric things. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, it was more what he did before he met all of you the bear right moment. and there was a little bit of just that and then there's this nugget just this nugget in the center of him that he begins to realize that this might not always have been his true calling and very slowly as everyone's talking and conversing and, and having their drink out comes the book Renata gave him and he, o he opens to where he left his bookmark. And as he's very, <laughs> not really properly eating, he's just sort of nibbling on something and then half eating, reading, yeah. and then nibbling a bit more, and then reading. Yeah. The, the, his attention 
drops into the book as he finds himself once again just drawn in this new and very interesting but exciting direction. The concept the concepts that it tries to get across to you, it's almost like it's trying to reformat your mind through allegory. Um, the text seems to ramble, and if you didn't know the objective of the book, you would probably have put it down a long time ago. It's almost the ramblings of a madman. It's only when you realize, when you keep in mind what you're trying to achieve, that you get to a certain point and go, what the fuck is this guy talking about? And then suddenly he'll say something that you go, oh, and then you go back and you reread three pages. It seems to be almost like a kind of um, secret society, almost Masonic codified manual in that unless you know what you're reading, it doesn't mean anything. Um, you go back as it refers to uh, the example of the man with the barrel and you kind of go, oh, fuck, not him again. And you go back and you reread the, the concept of the man with the barrel. Um, and, you know, you, you can't kind of go back and relate it to this. And you kind of go, okay, is that what you're saying? Is you saying, are you saying that that's how time works or is that how time seats on reality? And you keep reading and yeah, it's, it, it's a little bit mind bending. Um, and in part of you is almost frustrated that, you know, you could probably write a how-to manual, but in a way you're kind of getting it as well. Uh, you know, you could probably make a, a straight line how-to manual. This is how you bend time. This is how you manipulate time. But in a way, the twisting, turning nature of the book, you feel is almost training you how to work with time itself. Because time isn't simple. It's not a standard operating procedure. It's twisting. You've got to feel your way through part of it. That's the feeling that you get from the book. Kate, what's Cora thinking of right now? Last thought before bed, the most important one, the one that just as you get to the end of the day, you think, oh shit, I haven't given enough of my myself to this, my attention to this. Um... I mean, I think she's she's watching everyone else a little bit through the day and then they start talking about all this and she kind of realizes that she... Um, she... Act, like, a lot of the time she feels like she's just, like, following along on this sort of journey and, and doing what she... Like, she just... Which is very much her. She's just like, what's happening? And I'm just going to, like, come along for the ride kind of thing. Um, I think as she's about to go to bed... She kind of remembers that this is the time she goes to, to the Fey Worlds, and and that actually, she. She has a more important role to play a little bit, or at least she, she should have a a, a job to do, that she because because she has this knowledge now of where this thing is, and um and she can talk to the, um to the Fey about where they're at and so she she suddenly kind of like was about to kind of chill out and then realizes that she she has to like uh go into kind of official mode a little bit of actually wait no this is this is where the, the stuff starts now i need to go okay we're actually on the hunt for this thing now like um and almost like she wants to go in getting getting a report of like where we're at, what is happening, like, and she kind of goes a little bit more mature than she often is, I think. Uh, and um, yeah, I think that's where her head goes of like, oh, right, this, no, this is real and let's go deal with this and step it up. You're a knight of the Fey world, let's go, kind of thing. Okay, nice. Mm. Felicia. What's Glory's foremost thought? I, I'm thinking she'd be more introspective after this day, seeing an entire village just commit ritualistic suicide of all things. That's very different because she's used to how things operate back home and like. Yes, it's different here when she's traveling outside of Scholara, and especially as she's traveling with these guys, that it's 
she's getting that insight that yeah things aren't exactly normal here but seeing that and like the willingness all of these go all of these in, um, infernals went to just to not sin it's odd because like the game it's all about proving yourself by being better than everyone else by doing the most and these guys chose to do nothing in the end they chose to just cash their chips in and go yeah and do you think that she would have seen it as um suicide which uh for viewers and players alike i would not normally put gratuitously into a into a story um and part of spending so long to talk about why they were doing it Mm. Would she have seen it as suicide or would she have seen it as what I think most of us get? And that is that the imps were escaping, being drawn into something that they no longer wanted to be. Yeah, like she gets... But it was freedom for them, not the end. Yeah, it's... Victory. Partially that, but like she wouldn't get the victory in it. Like, sure, they escaped, but... Fair. Was it actually like victory or just cowardice and the inability to face or be uh, strong enough? There's Attles right there. Yeah. 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 There's Attles around right there. Was it cowardice? Um, and yeah, for for you, glory is something. Uh, no, sorry. You're, you're glory. Well, victory for glory. There we go. <laughs> victory for glory is something that feels good, sense of accomplishment. And you didn't see them at any point smiling about what they were doing. No. They were only resolute. And resolute is normally what leads to victory. It's not the feeling of victory. And for these infernals to take their chances with the gods, to escape the clutches of hell, and to fall upon the mercy of the gods, whether that means that they... Uh, end up with oblivion or get caught in the void before they become nothingness by the gods and be judged fairly or even judged to be punished further for what uh, what they are and what they've done. Um, It's a hell of a gamble. The only victory that they had there was that they were going to not, they knew that they weren't going to become slaves of hell anymore. So they were going to leave free. That's not necessarily to say that they were going to go on to a reward. Uh, in fact, Oblivion was kind of in the middle of that scale, wasn't it? Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, Aiden. <sighs> Aiden's... I mean, first thing that comes to the mind, obviously, is you know which queen how we're gonna deal with her how we're gonna find her what we're gonna do when we find her is she really a lich is she not obviously because that's what the conversation was just about of course that's gonna be sitting at the front of his mind at first i think he's just gonna think about how he doesn't want to deal with hector he's gonna think about the old god is still about (laughs) yeah he's gonna think about olivia uh you know, much really like to be an actual spend... ghost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we like to be actually spending time with her. But in general, as, like... as, as, as he like has eclipsed light over his legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but in general, he's just thinking about. He's just thinking about. Just wish things were easier. He really wish he hadn't had the weight that he had thrown upon him. Yeah. Right. Like he is basically in no other, in, in, like with using other words and terms, he's thinking he kind of wants a vacation of all things. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but then he's also thinking about his mom. And he's also thinking about what usually happened to Order of the Ghost Slayer Blood Hunters when they expire. <laughs> Uh, and he is 
yeah. kind of going to bed with the realization that there really is no break for him. <laughs> yeah. Would I um, be correct in saying that when, because normally this would have been played because you took the step out and step back in again. Um, this wasn't role played. It was something that I just went, right, you're at this yeah. part of your personal story when you come back. Yeah. Would it be correct to say that when Aiden agreed to become the commander uh, of the Silver Hunt, uh, that um, he agreed that it was the right thing, but that didn't necessarily mean they liked it. Absolutely not. It's he he felt he had he was he had his back against the wall, and so like, you still feel coerced in the same way that you felt uh, societally pressured to become a blood hunter. Uh, you still felt coerced. Much. Was part of that that you thought that? the alternative was Hector becoming your commander and that would have been worse. Yeah, like, it was... I mean, Hector... I know Hector doesn't want the responsibility. So it's either I become the... Blo like, I become the commander of the Silver Hunt or there is no commander and everything falls to pieces. Right? It's lesser of two evils thing to him. Yeah, makes sense. And finally, Eclipse. What's going through your head other than fish, milk, and keeping hold of your human? Uh, yes, and, and he, he wiggled his toes, and his toes are now bleeding. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, she's thinking about, well, obviously, the events of the day, because it was a big thing about Jordan. She's thinking a lot about... Um, She's thinking about the lady, lady, uh, Kanitava, yeah, yeah Kanitava and Lilith, and the role that she played in the downfall of the heart with, uh, with Jordan. Because she's like, and she's writing a bit down a bit of notes beforehand as well about what was going on. She's also thinking about, well, obviously, that the devils here had changed their nature, so. Th thoroughly that they decided to instead of going back to that to finish it now before that could happen again and how it really mattered to them that they stayed who they become they didn't want to become something that they knew was they couldn't really resist anymore without the divine protections they had before <laughs> Uh, but she's specifically thinking about Karnitava and if she ha did she actually manage to change her nature or did, did she genuinely fall in love with uh, Jordan or was there something else going on <laughs> okay good stuff I'm gonna roll on from that I've got things for other other people, but I'm going to roll on for that. As you are dwelling on Kani Talpa, her mortal form named Lilith, just because I love the name, um, you do suddenly get this image in your head. Uh, small, waifish figure, yet with a kind of wiry muscle like a dancer's muscle. Think kind of Hugh Jackman type muscle, um, but elven. Um, the way that she walks and holds herself is with a rigid poise that it doesn't take her any effort. It's part of having such a strong frame. Uh, thin, elegant neck, um, sharp half-elven features and yet you've met quite a few half-elves in your city girl um you can see that for all of the lithe wafishness there's just certain features of a slightly muscly jaw steely gaze the eyes her eyes have got a kind of a light hazel to them almost a gold her hair is um, sleek, sable, uh, straight black hair, uh, goes 
no further than the nape of her neck. Um, doesn't go down as far as her shoulder blades. Um, very uniform, very precise, uh, which lends itself to an elven fashion. And you can see that she has an, an intensity of stare. Spends most of her time quiet, but when she speaks, she speaks with a steely determination and will. Bear in mind, you're thinking of this whilst you've got your head in Ivan's lap. Um, I mean, and... mostly he's like the bottom part of his legs. Yeah, his bottom part. <laughs> well, like, this, you're, you're still kind of in the um, in the uh, in the tavern here. Um, uh. It hasn't quite hit dusk. You're just kind of, I guess, having the Sunday lunch syndrome after a big meal. I guess it would be. Yeah. Uh, so you're kind of reclining, in a way. Um, She's making sure Aiden is sufficiently covered in her fur in case yes. he goes back to the Marking dust Marking Mahuman. <laughs> yes. Um, Scent glands, like, on the legs. <laughs> congratulations, you've been marked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, this comes in with a photorealistic clarity eclipse. It doesn't feel like an approximation or a simulation or extrapolation of what you've heard of her. It feels like a memory, one of your memories. Like you've just suddenly gone, oh yeah, it's her. But you also know that you've never met or seen this woman before in your life. And it's kind of time I'm seeing. <laughs> That's what it says in your head. Yeah. Kanitawa slash Lila. Yeah. I did... Or was it Farewell who saw her once in a vision? Once, yeah. Farewell, remind me, did I show you her um, demon form or her no, half-elven form? No, it was her half-elven form, which I got through uh, Legend Law. And was that through a piece of art or direct sight? Um, it was through art. Well, my no. notes. as in we through, well, as in the object I used. Yep. Yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, it was, a, the, it was the object I used as a piece of art, which gave me the 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 yeah, divine we, mystical we also, nature gave me visions. Yeah, and the it, also, art, it was. Go on, Karen. Pretty, uh, was, uh, no, the, the art I think belonged, or it was either the art or it was the uh, bones of um, Silk Whisper. Yeah, it was one of those ones where it sort of gave the vision of the city as well. Yeah. Which was mm -hmm. the other thing. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Um, strange. You kind of almost know her. It's like you can picture her. Next up, I think out of all of this would probably be me asking a quick question. Um, Aiden, are you staying here or are you going back to the dusk? Hall? Yeah, I'm staying here. Okay. And in that case, dusk comes. Uh, I you can feel the gate nearby and you just dismiss it with your mind being yeah. able to spare yourself from another running with Hector and surely the window passes I and think I would rather stay somewhere warm tonight <laughs> all farewells newly furnished abode um, is available for you all yes um, we all have individual rooms except well, even Eclipse has her room, but mm -hmm. she's not gonna use it. It's just gonna of be. Of course, like, she's not gonna use uh, it. It's gonna be like a pile of blankets. Yeah, her, her room perfect. is basically where she dumps her shit, and then she yeah. goes and finds a warm human. Oh, yeah. warm humanoid. Her room uh, has a pile of blankets and a wall that is like covered in corkboard, so that she can make her <laughs> like, like red conspiracy thread. theory. Yeah. yeah. Is there a cat okay. tower? Yes. Yes. Obviously. It's like a giant scratching pole. It's how she as gets well. to the top of the conspiracy board. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, in that case, the first one I'm going to do 
is uh, Kate. And I appreciate this will may go uh, and flank both sides of the break. Yeah, you get yourself ready for bed, Cora. And for you, it's strange because it's a dual preparation. It's pre preparing for your body to rest because you do always wake up well refreshed uh, when you come back to the material plane. Um, but you're also getting ready to go and spend some time potentially with your liege lord, potentially with your partner, um, potentially on a mission, who knows? And you get ready uh, for bed and uh, uh, presumably Eowyn is there and you're just kind of winding down because you do have to sleep to get there. So um, you still have to go through the motions of getting ready to go to sleep. Um, and unless there's any particular flavor or facts that you want to talk about, uh, um, about this point, because obviously there is a familiar in the room, so you might want to talk to her. Um, is there anything in particular? I don't, I don't think so. Okay. Um, she might just relay what I was just saying to you about, like, oh shit, I think we need to actually do something about this with, like, regarding the the the, uh, the witch queen. <laughs> So she she okay. probably like talks to a win a bit like she's talking she talks to us she would talk to herself. Yeah, um, yeah. I should imagine you've got a bit of a ritual going on. Well, not a ritual, a routine going on now where yeah. she's your familiar. She knows that she's your confidant, and yeah. um, there's so no particular the day, need for her to respond. No, yeah, not necessarily. She might. Uh, yeah, but it but it's it doesn't necessarily have to be RP. Yeah. but it's and occasionally sort of, like, she does offer her thoughts. Of, like, but well, that was a thing, you know. Yeah. yeah. In this case, she's mostly uh, curled up on a small pomander with um, uh, with Tuck. Um, Tuck is uh, tucking into some sunflower seeds. Tuck is tucking in. And, and um, you can feel that lethargy spreading across your, your neck and your shoulders are just getting that little bit heavy. Um, and oh, I also have a lion, a mouse, and a goat just curled up round near me. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> yes, the, the lion, the rat, and the goat are uh, are just kind of chilling. Um, <laughs> and uh, actually, thank you for reminding me of that. Um, <laughs> I, I rolled three dice for those uh, those rust bag things. Yeah. You do notice that Eowyn suddenly does the whole kind of meerkat slash dog thing of just she's there just kind of nuzzled into tucks fur and suddenly she goes and straightens up and there's a <clears throat> behind you and when you turn around there is a tall right about six foot seven um uh tall black woman uh completely bald um she has uh, no eyes that you can see. Instead, it seems to be that there are flames inside her eyes. Um, she is currently wearing a kind of a lace uh, dress um, that uh, is in uh, kind of a deep uh, burnt orange, um, highlighted with uh, what seems to be kind of little... Uh, flecks of gold, almost like little tiny bits of glitter, just highlights it at key points. Um, you can kind of see her figure through the dress, but you can't see any detail through the dress. Um, this is a Fey Raymond where um, it will actually bend physics um, in that it'll show what she wants it to show, but it will show only what she wants it to show. It's majestic, powerful um, kind of dress and visage in front of you. Um, she has um, what seem to be shoes made out of may maybe terracotta, uh, kind of like a dark red ceramic um, on her feet, um, open-toed at the end, um, but uh, they have a slight heel to them. Uh, the general sensation is that she could walk into a ballroom and fit in. 
and the uh, you do see that there is a, uh, a short glaive, so a glaive with only a short handle um, uh, down within arm's reach. And she's currently uh, running strong, elegant hands through the lion's mane. The lion is completely placated. Um, normally, anybody who would be intruding, who would normally cause you some form of alarm, the lion would kind of, because these they always act in your best interest, um, would normally kind of give a snarl of warning or something like that. Uh, the lion seems completely placated. Uh, one thing I have uh, forgot to mention is that she does have slightly pointed ears. Um, I did. I did have a feline trickster sketch, but I, I didn't prepare it. Um, the general's in front of you, General Amara. Mm. Uh, hi, I was. I was just. I was just coming. It's okay. You're not. Uh, you're not late for anything. The Mandas come to us when they come. I came to speak to you. Just me, or should I...? Just you. Just you. A knight to her commander. Okay. Please, not so far. Just sit down on the bed, cross my legs. I am pleased that you have joined our ranks. I have been somewhat set in my ways as to what makes a true summer night. I've led so many of our our wars, our scuffles, our uh, symbolic battles, that maybe I have become a little inflexible sometimes. When I came for the princess and uh, ended up being part of the bond that you have with my liege lord. I judged you too quickly, too harshly. It showed a lack of conceptual wisdom on my part. Seeing what you are doing here on Mundus, being linked as we are, and me able to experience certain things amongst your tale. I know now that you are worthy of the heart of my, my princess. You have taken on as a heart's guard and your power has grown. One who is not worthy flounders, fails and fades. And so I can speak to you now as a peer. A dawned night to a dawned night. I am concerned. I am concerned that the hunt that you bring to us has been adopted not out of necessity, but out of, let us say, ennui by the king. Though it is not the knight's place to question the king's orders, it is our place to advise. I did not want to advise against this hunt. I can see the urgency, the necessity. I can see how it is important to you and may be linked if his majesty is correct, to a greater catastrophe here in Mundus that will send unacceptable echoes through my own world. And yet, though I acknowledge this hunt should happen, I believe that his majesty may be blindsided to a degree. He is at the height of his power, and yet he feels both uninformed 
and also feels a certain amount of ennui. He brought his daughter back to his side because he needed her. But also because he was already suffering. Uh, this tale between you and Enola has given him a form of distraction. A distraction that can only happen from a father who wishes the best for his daughter, something out of love. It has channeled his passion, kept his interest, allowed him moments of mirth through which to focus his self, his essence. And through that mirth, he has been alleviated of a great burden. And yet he is feeling the price of immortality. None of us are born to eternity. None of us are able by our very nature to be able to cope with eternity, not even the gods. Isn't it said in one of the books of truth that was handed from Halo himself when he was the Allfather to his brethren, that for a god pain is eternal pain. The story of Torog, no? to scream in pain for the rest of eternity. This ennui, I believe, made His Majesty do something that needed to be done, but maybe not entirely for the right reasons. And I fear that it may spoil his judgment when it comes to our quarry. This witch queen is intensely powerful, uh, knowledgeable, and more powerful on this plane of existence than maybe he in his. Oh, oh, to match her on this marvelous. plane of existence. Let's just say that he is not the safest. He may be immortal, but he is not indestructible. If he was to be struck down, he would he would indeed die. He would be replaced by another aspect of summer. A night maybe would rise, or maybe an avatar would come from the very manifest of passion, fury, love. One side of it, at least. I do not wish this to happen. This is not something to be reassured about. It means that reality will not be torn asunder. It means that the minds of the populace of Mundus will not instantly become marred by his passing, but he will be gone. And I find that unacceptable. He is my liege lord, my king, and my oldest friend. So tell me, what do you know of this, this being? I feel like not en enough. If you are so afraid that this one creature could potentially kill the Summer King, I, I mean, the, that makes me worry that we are going up against something much more powerful than we realize. Um, you have protections that he does not. Remember that we, by our nature, are bound to the emotions, feelings. There are rules for the Fae that you don't have to follow, even as a Fae Knight. That's one of your strengths amongst our ranks, is that you are mundane enough there is a a balance the more powerful we become with fey magic the more constrained we are well then i and my friends must balance out what he doesn't have what you don't have exactly why i come to you 
pretty sure I told you and the others all that I know. I, she, uh, Iden has done more research since. Um, she's some princess from long ago who was a witch who turned against her king and the whole kingdom. It corrupted her and turned her into what she is. I've seen her consume the dead to give her life or heal her. This is a story that we don't necessarily have full knowledge of. Tell me, would you think that she would be more susceptible to the queen? And you know when she says the queen, it almost the capital letters drop into place and you know that she uh, she means the Winter Queen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, I don't know. I don't know if the others have found research to say as much. I don't know what her weaknesses are at all. Um, I... You say that she betrayed her king, who was also her lover. This would be... Would it be passion, hatred, envy, jealousy? You mean, you mean that fighting a king would actually make her powerful, whereas fighting a queen, she would feel less so? I'm trying to get the angle of attack, Sakura. When this creature took herself from a living, breathing form to what she is now, she took with her the essence of what perpetuated that act. Was it in a flash of passion that she pulled herself away from mortal fate? Was it to languish in her hatred, her envy, her jealousy? couldn't tell you for sure. No one can except her, but... Then maybe we should break some of our cover and at least try to contact her. Monster she may be on the outside, but I guarantee you she is an intelligent being. Uh, no doubt. You think we can reason with her, though? I doubt that we could reason with her. Whatever she took with her out of a mortal life meant that that defined her. She thought that she kept herself when she performed that act. She didn't. She tore one part of herself away from everything else that didn't just die, but became obliviated. And she turned herself into that. It would, she would have retained her memories, her knowledge, her skills. But the only part of her that exists now and drives that monster forward will be the part of her that initiated that terrible act in the first place. Do you think she dreams? I can guarantee she doesn't. Dreams require hope, even nightmares. They are at least the abstract of hope. There is no hope for her. She is a construct made of the torn pieces of herself. She only feels what she brought with her to feel. She cannot feel in context. There is no reasoning, but she is intelligent, which means that a conversation could happen. Just remember, you're not speaking to anything that is alive, nothing but a soul. It speaks like a, a gargoyle or a golem, simply being able to express the remnants, the feeling, doesn't mean that she's there anymore. You 
think we're gonna be able to get close enough to try and talk? I was under the impression that you were strong enough arcanists now. The proximity was not required. Maybe. I... I'm able to scry, but that doesn't get a conversation going, although it almost did with a pit fiend, but I don't know if that was... I don't feel like that's usually how it should work. Um, Maybe amongst you, you'll have a combination of spells that you could weave together. That's why I asked if she dreamt. Maybe we could have gone into her dreams, talked to her there. We're real in dreams. If she dreamt and we walked in, it would be war. Fair enough. All right. You said you didn't want to speak to my friends. I feel like it would be useful if you did. I merely did not wish to place myself in a compromised position, but if you believe oh. it's important, I would happily do so. I did not want to compromise you. <laughs> I merely want to give you more information that I feel like I cannot do on my own. I do not know everything that my friends can do. We're changing, growing, learning all the time. I am not as volatile as His Majesty, but I would ask you to um, help me stop any antagonization. Against you or? The flames in her eyes flare almost white hot for a second. Please bear in mind what you speak to and that I am led by emotion. Great. We had a very emotional day. A calm conversation, talking about the facts of the matter, should be safe. You don't have to show yourself if you have an ability to do not, or I could, maybe, I could. <laughs> I cannot show duplicity in the same way that my liege lord cannot show duplicity. Once again, you're still connected enough to this world to be able to utter a falsehood. I am not allowed. The way that I have manifested here, they will see all of me. I am the general of summer. Summer shows itself. It illuminates, okay, it pierces through the shadows. Um, thank, thank you, dude. You. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh I just had to break for a second. I already... Thank you. Um, oh, thank you, well, Sean. Thanks, um, Sean. Uh, 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 thanks. <laughs> um, you, take care, uh, you take care, my friend. Have a good night. Um, uh, okay, I do not want to compromise you. I can call them in here if you wish, or you can just be a voice from the dark. The location matters mind. not, although I do request that I bring the lion. I mean, it looks freaking great next to you. You should always have a lion. Why do you not have a lion? Just have I a will lion. attempt to acquire one. Yes, you should definitely. I okay. like it because it's fluffy. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I use that as my cue to go out the door and be like, Psst, are you all still awake? Um, so yeah, as uh, you go out with Amala, we're going to take a 10 minute break. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, yeah, and um, yeah, we will continue this conversation uh, with the General of Summer um, after the break. Yes. yes take care,
And welcome back. When we left off, General Amara, the General of Summer, um, Knight Defender of Summer, um, visited Cora before she was able to go to sleep. Had a heart to heart about her concerns about the Summer King, who seems to, yes, be going on this hunt for good reasons, but also for a few emotive reasons. And she's afraid that he may be blinded by his emotion and may end up stumbling against a very powerful creature. At the end of the conversation between Amala and Cora, Cora suggested that Amala speak to the rest of the group. And so walking behind Cora out of her bedroom into the main part of Farewell's caravan with a lion at her heels. Well, uh, as, as like, I mean, Farewell hasn't gone to bed. He's still reading, so he's still in the main part of the caravan. I've got this feeling that he just wouldn't bat an eyelid to the fact that there's a lion there as she went to bed with the one. Been all, yeah. yeah, it's been there all day. Yeah. So. Yeah. just be like, can't sleep. <laughs> and stood behind her is the character that I've mentioned before with eyes that look like small apertures looking into an inferno. Uh, we have a guest. Um, Mr. Bearbones. How do they know my name? Um, you started a war with my liege lord. Closes the door. <laughs> 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 Just closes closes the book, <laughs> moves it to one side. Well, I would I like my you to armor do... for this, or, or are we going to just talk? You don't need your armor. Do me a charisma saving throw, please. <laughs> oh Yay, shit! The one saving throw that I'm really good at. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! But wait. There's more. That, thanks to the shopping we did, I have advantage on Christmas saving throws. So, yeah. ah! Will it work? Because I need that, because that was only a 10. Um, <laughs> well, and that was a 5. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, 12. <laughs> uh, let's let, let's, let's, like, let's like just assume that you else. failed. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a 12. Um. <laughs> You are currently feeling heightened. Uh, you're not entirely sure why, um, but your, your heart is racing a little bit more. You're taking deeper breaths. Um, oh, that's not good. You're finding yourself sitting up straighter. You feel a little hungry, maybe. You're not quite sure what it is, but you're craving something. You're not entirely oh, no. sure. Um, oh, you gave him the munchies. There's a there's a there's a sense of it's almost like there's a scent in the air, maybe warm, evocative. Um, you feel slightly warmer, slightly blushed, um, and really focused all of a sudden. Your mouth kind of drying out a bit. Oh uh, yeah, he said I was like dry mouth, elevated heart rate, pulse. Is that a blush farewell? What did you do to me? <laughs> Who are you saying that to? Like it's just directed in Cora's direction as farewell's not quite sure as he's as it's one of those effects like he's just looked and it's happened. It's just it's a it's an accusatory who what did you do to me in the general direction of everybody that's not him? <laughs> Depending on all the people that come out of their rooms or not. Yeah, Hermit, the lion isn't speaking, General Amara is. Um, a, a tall, beautiful black woman, uh, bald-headed, uh, muscular, uh, wearing a kind of a, a lace, dark, um, burnt orange dress uh, that's a Fay Raymond, so it, it, it's kind of uh, sparkling. It's almost like designed by Disney. Um, and uh, yeah, so that, that's who's speaking. Um, when you say that to Farewell, uh, sorry, Farewell, when you say that to Cora, um, Amara turns to Cora and says, Sundir. 
At which point, Cora, you hear mortals. Well. Yeah, I, um, you'll be fine. Um, anyways, uh, nothing about that. This is about now. Um, the general wants to talk to us about this witch queen. She's worried, and if she's worried, I'm worried, and we should be worried. Um... You didn't see her pick it up, but she removes the short glaive from her back, um, where it seemed to be just behind her back somehow, um, places it um, propped up against a chair. May I sit? Well, you're hardly going, I'm hardly in a position when you're doing things like that to say, no, am I? Come into nice. somebody's caravan and start <laughs> casting magic out of them, bloody and invited. I have cast no magic. <laughs> She Get sits down. She sits down in an almost fluidic movement uh, that you note every single detail of. Farewell. <laughs> <laughs> so it's probably at that point. Farewell gets up from his, his, his from the table, and all you can hear is this sound, like you know, with boiling water. You know, it's got that very distinct sort of like oh, bounce to it. It's just that's coming out as his like mouth is making all of these sort of strange shapes as he's just like muttering under his breath in the primordial. <laughs> Goes over to one of the cabinets, just opens it up, and it's just full of like just like little tinctures and potions and all sorts of other things. And he starts working his way across there. There, right. And you just. Watch him as he pulls the top over something and just goes <laughs> and just necks the whole lot of it. Fuck. <laughs> Puts it back down, walks back over, sits down, and just closes his eyes. And, just, and so he just sits at the table with his eyes closed. <laughs> it's just like Eclipse has not moved from Miner's legs. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming that you guys are actually in because uh, you because uh, Cora was preparing for bed. Uh, the only one who right. said that they're in the room is Farewell. Otherwise, I would have got all you guys to uh, to roll as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I presume that you're currently in Iden's bed. And Iden's kind of like, yeah, I still need to get you. I still need to get you. I need. To <laughs> I'm not going to sleep in my pee. armor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'd I'd like to get like ready for bed now. Can you leave? <laughs> uh, and all you hear is so. there's these weird chirping sounds coming from Eclipse that cats do when they don't want you to leave yeah. don't want to leave Yeah. like ah oh, but if I chirp and purr at them they won't make me leave yeah <laughs> <Pretty> <laughs> much. all cats Sitting are proficient in manipulation it's true, mm -hmm. it's true. And sometimes you just say just straight up no <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. In all the purring and the chirping and the hissing and it's just like no <laughs> no <laughs> but yeah a good question are we hearing any of this happen because uh, as you far can, as i know it was just you can Cora. hear a conversation uh and you probably heard a slight exclamation from farewell did i hear the why did you cast magic on me oh yeah yeah you would have done that okay he said it fairly i'm loudly. probably going to go check it out then. okay so you kind of <laughs> kick off the, uh, the cat um and head into the room um, I, I I follow. <laughs> Farewell and Cora hear a loud. <laughs> okay. No, uh, no, there's just a. Thud. a <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just a. Yeah, it's just a. You don't say it's just a. And then tap, 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 tap. I, when you walk in and the same person that, that I've described is sat at the table. Uh, Farewell has his eyes closed. There's a lion that you remember has been kicking around for a while. It's just a lion, it happens. Um, uh, that is sure. uh, currently, uh, she's currently just kind of teasing the mane of this lion. Um, Can I tell by, for, I... <sighs> okay, so Iden's family don't specialize in the Fae or it, it's mostly about ghosts, the undead, vampires, etc. But I imagine Iden would know a Fae when he sees one. Uh, no. No, you no. know that okay. she. You know that she is. Uh, knowing your background, uh, you, Faye is in the shortlist. You're like this is either a Faye, 
uh, like a true fae, an Aladrin, or potentially an elemental. I'm not sure. Cor right, Cor but regardless, she's definitely like just... looking pretty chilled and relaxed, though, and kind of smirking at Farewell, just so you know. So that's clearly just... there's not a dangerous situation. Just so. Iden still just gives a sigh and just says, "Fay." Uh, right, like in that tone. And with that, give me a Christmas saving throw. <laughs> Dude, you are great at. <laughs> All the I'm boys are going to go goo goo gaga over her and go, ooh, pretty. Do baby. I have a. Thing, I mean, though? I don't give need a, a magical effect to go goo goo gaga <laughs> over a strong, independent woman, you know? No, I know. Like, Glory's going to, like, save, and, but still goo 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 gaga. <laughs> I have a feeling that Felicia's going to relent. <laughs> No, that's fair. Uh, I'm still just looking at something because I felt like I had, I don't know, something against charisma saving throws, but I don't remember. I'm just going to make it normally then. Never mind, I had no idea that um, uh, that Kate was going to say, oh yeah, speak to the rest of the group, but I had this prepared a long time ago. This is me, this is me Oh, going, that's a 17. I don't fucking know. Quick, ask everyone else. 17, are you good? 17, uh, yeah, you, you kind of, you don't even feel the effect that because okay Farewell didn't even feel the effect he just felt different. he just felt it right he just felt different you feel irritable irritable uh you feel hot uncomfortable it's like those really fucking hot humid days where the pollen's sticking to your skin mm -hmm. um just irritable just, no, no, no don't like it don't like it um you kind of get that she's the source but also you kind of get that she i don't know gets it she just gets it she gets she gets the irritation right you're, you're both there together all right um, well i'm gonna stand around and make sure that no other that no fucking nonsense happens she, she sat there stroking a lion <laughs> that's all she's doing <laughs> i know but like Yep. yep. Even, you're, you're on your guard, yeah. And, and Blood you're, you're hunters doing... are taught to fucking yeah. absolutely zero trust on the face. And, so. and you're you're coiled as part of the as part of the the anger, the irritable uh, irritability. You are actually wired, ready to act. Right. Okay. Um, Do I need to? Because I'm right on like Ivan's heels. Do I, I assume I even need to make a semi pro as well? You see a lady. Yeah. She's a lady. Yeah. She's a pretty lady. She's a pretty lady. She's a pretty lady with fiery eyes, and she's stroking a lion. The end. Uh, okay. You don't have to make a roll. Huh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Maybe she only affects guys. <laughs> Glory, you wake. I'm doing my make. Wait. Before and Glory bed? comes out, and she basically has what is a face mask on. Of course she does. Evening <laughs> skin she like got a white face. Does she have like the cucumbers? The cucumbers? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're all like, where'd you get cucumbers from? This is like a British <laughs> setting. <laughs> it's like, if anything though, it's not, it's, it's one of those like proper clay masks as well. So mm -hmm. it's like really thick on there as well. And you can tell she's only just put it on because it's still like really quite dark and there's only a few splodges of the, the, of the light stuff on there. It's yeah. just like, I have a routine. It takes time. She's going to tell me when we're having mm. guests. <laughs> oh shit, we have guests. Two minutes. <laughs> and she closes the door again. <laughs> um, yeah. As you close the door, Glory, you don't need to make a roll either for a different reason. Um, and... Um, but immediately you get from her powerful, strong, a natural born leader, beautiful and <laughs> ruthless. You yep. pretty much want to fuck her on the spot. It's Obviously. it's just there. Mm, There's no yep. rule, there, uh, no, no role, no resistance, no. Um, oh, but no. in the complete opposite direction to Eclipse. Mm-hmm. And anybody who has played Changeling the Lost or worked with Faye in some of their other campaigns knows exactly why these two didn't have to roll for two completely different ends of the spectrum. <laughs> God. Uh, yeah. And Gloria <laughs> comes out with like face fixed right, and perfect. even some very light makeup on already. 
just like, okay, let's do introductions. I'm Glory Tesca Kotal. A pleasure to meet you. The uh, uh, the general turns around and says, Amala. She doesn't offer her hand. Hello, I'm Eclipse of the Moon. I am aware of your best to just make the introductions that I am General Amala of the Summer Corps. And I am Cora's commander. Okay. <laughs> Go on. I've been speaking to our hearts guard here, and she has been sharing our intelligence with regard to the Witch Queen. That I believe that you are still pursuing. That is yes. correct. The sound of bubbling water intensifies. <laughs> <laughs> is it like, I want to imagine it... No. I want to imagine like Feral speaking with like a filter that just makes him go. <laughs> you know, like, I, I'm, imagining, <laughs> I'm imagining when someone like pours in that popping candy into their mouth and then drinks some water and just goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's sort of like this rolling sound with the occasional pops in it, and they they pop just at the right place that you would expect for like uh, uh, the the sharpness upwards of a of a particularly egregious swear as you see that your Gen Walter Genasi cleric is sat there with his eyes closed. Oh, she's bashful. <laughs> farewell, are you tired? Is that a blush farewell? I am going to burn the caravan down with you all. Okay, okay. Let's, let's, <laughs> moving on. I'm please try and give a good impression, okay? This is the first time you guys have met. Get on. Tell bitch. her to undo whatever she did to me. She's my what commander. I can't there, tell well. her to do anything. You can ask politely. I regret farewell that I cannot undo anything because I'm not doing anything. You're reacting to me. Ooh. <laughs> Farewell. <Don't>. Farewell. <laughs> also, thank you, Hermit. I approve of that message. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> what did he say? I don't have chat hope. <laughs> Is this green daddy dot X uh, uh, oh, Christ. has stopped working? <laughs> I don't react. Clearly, you this, do. It, well, I am not responsible for what magic effects do to me. That. Do you remember we had that? Where, which one are right. you all? All right, I speak. It's very hard to give you a telling off. What like business this. do you have here? There, the summer caught court are helping with the witch queen i've told you that they helping to hunt them you did yes well, yes yes the commander <laughs> is here because she's worried about the king and the effects of this creature and you we think need to that find the, the best creature... way to fight it also thanks simon that, that <laughs> is yes agreed I love how, like, Eclipse Reasons is, like, slightly complicated and Glory is just lesbian. <laughs> the two first words that Felicia told me, she was like, so Glory, she's a disaster lesbian. That's before I even found out she was a tiefling. Yeah, yes. That's true. That is the top of her list of character choices. Disaster lesbian first, <laughs> disaster sorcerer lesbian. second. <laughs> you know. Disaster lesbian, then the dragon sorcerers, oh, then yeah. tiefling. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. It is clearly a year. Careful what you say to your DM kids, because if all of a sudden I, I give a context based challenge, there'll be times when I won't even give you a role because you've said, oh, this if you broke this yeah. person in half, they'd have this written through them like a stick of rock. And it's like, yep, yeah, fine, no problem. So yeah. you've just given me your. Potential strength, potential weakness. Cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hand over um, those daggers. 
Ship. So she turns and says, shall we distill this down to the essential? Yes, shall please. we? I have explained to Sakura that the Witch Queen is a being of a single act, a powerful act. But when she tore herself away from mortality, forming herself in the monstrous way that she is, she did so out of a single act, and that act could have been hatred, envy, jealousy, passion, vengeance. That is who she is at the core. It is, as the Fae would be most, uh, find of the most important, her story. If we knew more about that, we would know whether or not His Majesty would have a greater challenge facing her, or maybe a greater advantage facing her, or whether or not it would be, and she just looks at Cora, kind of showing that she doesn't want to say the name, someone else. The level to which we can aid you, and we will aid you nonetheless, will be dependent on this. You have the ability to research or even confront, hold to account this being. Yes, it shows part of your hand, but you could learn enough that it would give us a greater ability to help, I suppose. We are not currently tracing her whereabouts. We know enough about that. We could quite happily appear in this realm within a day's ride of her and immediately seek her out. Such are the powers available to us. We're currently chasing her story, those who dream about her, those who know about her, going from mind to mind in the dream country to get her story. Unfortunately, being that those that she has encountered have rarely lived to tell the tale, we are unable to find it. If you can distill it from her in some way, we would have more to offer. It would make the inevitable battle easier. Do you have any theories? Not really. I mean, we know too little. It'll be easier to, like, there, I was just sort of his head's moving around the room because he's not quite sure where everybody is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's, uh, we, we don't know enough about what, what we're hunting. We don't, she could be anything. Undead, definitely, but maybe not even a leech. She might not even have the benefit of a flag tree, or she could have something far worse. Um, we won't know more until we find a hunting ground and find her victims. That's usually a good way to tell what you're hunting when it comes to these sorts of things. That is true. Look what it eats and how it eats, and you can then determine what you are going up against. We won't know more until we're closer. What we could use, and perhaps this is somewhere where you can come in, or at least try and come in, is we need to get to our destination faster. There may be a way that we could help. Good. Also, you wish to examine an area where her victims are? It would, would be, be useful, beneficial, yes. yes. Hmm. If we can discover a pattern of places it is attacked, you can usually narrow down an area that it is attacking from, as it will need, or at least has been hiding somewhere, or at least resting somewhere, as otherwise 
word would have likely already massively spread through the countryside of something that's hunting the forest. These things tend to move very, very quickly, which, from what I can tell from the scrying that Cora did and the, the information that Aiden has been able to get, is that she's attacking isolated homesteads. Easy prey, quick prey, prey where you can isolate, destroy, and consume. And the likelihood is that by the time anybody stumbles across it will either be days or weeks have passed or may never come across it. Whereas if you attack a village, even with the most ruthless of blood hunters, no offense, Hayden, um, None taken. you will lose people and they will escape and people talk and people share. And as we've not picked up any rumors of this other than what we have found by our own investigations and our own mystical means this one is deliberately picking a pattern or at least to me of something that wants to keep on the down low for the moment whilst it gathers its strength which gives us a window of opportunity that or she's strength. not leaving any survivors we True, but even a village that. disappearing overnight unless it's isolated like this let me, let me share what we have in that direction. First of all, you're correct. They look for isolated places that they can decimate quickly. You say growing her strength. No. She is restoring it. That much we know. Thank you for the raid, Sean. Yeah. Oh, Sean, thank you. Thanks, Sean. She's restoring her strength. Also, some of our heart seekers, I guess is the correct translation. Um, Cora, in your head, is a type of courtier. Um, have divined that what this creature is looking for, what she yearns for the most, is not in any of these homesteads. They are but a meal, a commodity, a utility to her. They are not what she looks for. She's not, then they are not of any importance other than a momentary refreshment or replenishment. But she does seek something and she seeks it with everything that she has. Mm. Mm. You may be able to find more by going to a place that has been decimated. You are, after all, one with the Raven Queen. Okay. Yeah. Talk to. Still, we need hmm. to figure. We still need to. We still need some help in the form of getting there. Well, the first is easy. Eowyn Briarborn. You may come into contact with my hand. And <laughs> flitting <laughs> from, flitting, from Cora's shoulder onto Amala's hand. Amala looks at her for a second. And Eowyn goes, I know the way. I can take you to the farmhouse. Okay. You're uh, a muted. You're muted. Tape. Yeah, you're muted. Am I? Oh. Still muted. I can there tell. you are. There you go. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Nothing changed. I don't know. I, uh, I no, I've been button. having problems. I've been having problems with uh, uh, Zoom. Uh, Zoom. Zoom. I literally takes... touched nothing. Weird. Yeah. Mm. It, no, I reckon it'd be Zoom because I couldn't unmute myself. Yeah. For like the longest I, uh, time. I never so. even touched Zoom. I've got. I use my mixer. Yeah, okay. Weird. It's been weird today. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, every so often Simon gets a little bit louder and then quieter again, like something's kicking in. But, Eowyn does um, spend as little amount of time on Amala's hand as possible and flits your shoulder immediately afterwards. 
Um, how far? How long? Nearest one's about eight days away. That's better than 20 days. 20 days. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see what information we can get from there. This creature was hunting something or hiding from something from uh, my brain. Hunting. Both, probably. A bit of both, yes. But mainly yeah. she was, hunting. She was hunting for replenishment. But Just, the manner in which okay. she is hunting, she's doing so, what was it you said, Mr. Fairbones, on the down low. She was hunting in such a way that anybody who had come across it would think it's an animal attack or that of the feral folk. And wait, she was hunting because of what I did via the king? I attacked mm. her. No, she... Uh, no? We believe that she is aware of you. Uh, she is seeking something. Not she, the yes. homestead, so not but she's seeking something else. But no, she's not seeking you. We would know no. that. No, no, I... So, yes, so she is seeking something. That's what I thought. But she's seeking to achieve something. She's not seeking to destroy something or to kill something. We would taste that. So it's not necessarily an object she's seeking. It might be, obviously, but okay, it's a task. From what she's I didn't know, can something. he deduce what she's trying to accomplish? From um, what we know and from what he I didn't knows. Not enough information. Um, um although Amala does say, I believe I personally believe that this being is trying to successfully complete some sort of achievement, maybe some great work, some opus. Now, can I can I just like remind myself and maybe others of, of the stuff? Because we met this person in a vision of the past from Farewell. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And Cora attacked them through this through the Summer King. Mm -hmm. and kind of uh, hurt them. So and... you were uh, astrally, project uh, astrally projecting into the past yeah. so that you could experience it in glorified VR of uh, failed yeah. family yeah. being killed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. You locked on to the Witch Queen. Yeah. And you were like, I want to hurt her. Yeah. Um, when you did so, because your power is drawn from the Summer King, the Summer King was not in that VR at the time and was like, okay, so we're stabbing a bit, shall we? And um, lashed out to her in the prime material world in the present. In the present. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's not like, yeah, so that was her from the past. So she has been somewhere all this time. So actually, like, we probably, yeah, the attack potentially triggered her out of hiding so she could heal up. Um, but what she's seeking now is interesting, unless it is who has harmed her. Um, I, and there was a box that Farrell's potentially old girlfriend got sucked into, um, right? And did the witch... Not, not, queen? technically not Farrell's girlfriend, just to make that clear. Just Cora, Cora has suspicions. Um, but sure, <laughs> uh... Friend, um, you have your truth, I have mine, <laughs> yeah. But, 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 um, but there was at least one person potentially like take like soul or essence was taken into to a box, and that box was taken by the witch queen. Correct, I confirm your notes. Okay, do we remember any other souls being taken in, or just that one person? Everyone else. They were all. But the entire the caravan, huh? Well, right? the entire they were killed, but that some were the killed ones outright. that didn't survive, the ones that killed outright, went into it. Yeah. Okay, so there's yeah, so this is all the screaming people. So it's the witch queen has got this box of screaming people. Sorry, I'm, I'm just. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay. Yeah, the box of screaming people. But we still don't that... know why. Like those are they okay? Okay. And the people that survived got sucked into it. Yeah, we we kind of know what they're being farewell. used for, but we don't know mm -hmm. why they're being used in that way. Oh, um, do we? Damn it. Okay. Yeah, we know that they're being used as some form of battery. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say. Term. Right. And that they are in the void between planes. Yeah. So a, pla a place of total 
uh, nothingness and entropy. Yeah. Um, and anything in there normally wastes away. Yeah. Oh, um, fuck. They've just been there the whole time. Um, the, and when these got sucked in through the box, basically told you that the box is a physical gateway, is an artifact gateway to the void. Yeah. Uh, piss. Okay, yeah. okay, this might have triggered something. This is why it's nice to just go back over. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Because it's weeks. When you say it all then. in a row. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. It, it takes weeks to I've been lacing it into then, sessions. Yeah, so. which yeah. is great. But and it's good to just be like, wait a second. That box is there. And okay. Because I've forgotten it was the box of the box. nothingness that takes the... you to the plane of nothingness where you become nothing. Well, the, and the uh, box we need to release. Dri uh, some driving people any from. sentient being insane. I just, I, I, th I think I know. And there is a pair of shoes flying around <laughs> yes. there. There's currently a pair of shoes flying through the void. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Yeah, and they ruined I... slippers. <laughs> no, it's just one boot. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, it's one boot. Yeah, it's confused through one boot into the into the void. Yeah. Uh, I think I might know what she's trying to do, but okay. I don't know if Iden would. I don't know if Iden would have come to the same conclusion. I was <laughs> smart well for it. To a certain extent, Aiden can theorize. So you can give it to Aiden for theoretical. Yeah? Yeah. Bear in mind, he's been voice. reading the books of the fucking dust, uh, uh, dust cold. Uh, so you've been reading some pretty hinky shit recently. And also, okay. Matt Mercer gave you more intelligence. So I with did, all those things did. together, you can uh, possibly put a theory together. Okay, so she's regaining strength and she is putting souls into a box for a for a soul battery and sending them to the void where there is literal nothing between planes. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's trying to kickstart her own plane of existence. Hold on. That's not entirely out of. Yeah, fellow fucks with that. Yeah. So, that like, I, I didn't just, like, blurts this out. I didn't, like, was just, like, like after a point she just he just started like Wait. like zoning out really hard so until he came to that conclusion and just blurts it out okay so, my question to that would be why is she trying godhood. to restart a different reality godhood. where he well, where the old king doesn't leave her or is this well, a, a new place to live a new plane of existence doesn't mean like godhood godhood just you don't necessarily have a plane. You're I, in the astral sea. Obviously, obviously, I can't tell you why. I can't. I, I can't read her mind. But it it sounds like a, like a magnum. She. It's gonna require a shit zillion power, which for t which a lot of souls can provide. Glory Arcana check. <sighs> you do know the words that I love to hear. <laughs> Uh, okay, so then 18 plus a 7 is a 25 on Arcana. Works for me. Um, you are aware of the um, demiplane or metaplane uh, spell. Um, mm -hmm. uh, making small demiplanes is achievable. However, the way that the arcane power works is that uh, when you make a small demiplane of existence or pocket reality as an arcanist, uh, you normally have to draw power from a plane of existence to keep it going, or at least drawing powers from the planes of existence or the maelstrom, which is the source of all magical power in this uh, in this setting, um, which you would know, of course, as a sorcerer, even though you're not a wild mage. The um, uh, most kind of sorcerers are sorcerer. trained, trained sorcerers. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, the rarest so, of them all. Technically well, speaking, according to this theory, uh, the um, the theory that Aiden has given can hold some weight in that she could have a self-powering, a self-staining uh, demiplane or metaplane, depending on your point of view, whether it's connected to other planes of existence or just uh, floating about on its own. Um, to what end, you don't know, but yes, it is one possible application of sucking souls into the void and using them in such a way that they are powering this. The only flaw that you would see is that um, until she 
creates that opus, if that indeed is her opus, uh, the souls themselves would be taken by the void eventually, so they would deplete, which means that she would have to keep topping up by putting more souls in the box. Um, but it's a good explanation, but you believe it's not the only potential explanation. It no. could also be where she's hiding her phylactery. That's true. If she's a lich. If she is actual an actual lich. You want to protect it from being destroyed and broken down by the void. You wrap it in something, don't you? And the Unless she's put a metaplane or a demiplane in the void, her phylactery would undergo the same decay as everything else. There you mm. go. Yeah. But if you wrap it in something, so it that decays first. A single demiplane spell would do it. Keep powering the demiplane. How would you ever destroy it? Uh, unless you knew which. By uh, picking apart her demiplane. But you would need an object of that plane to get to that plane. Um, or a link. It's a yeah. vault. It's ba she's basically what Feral is trying to say. She's basically creating a vault, an impenetrable vault and throwing the key inside the vault. Yeah. yeah. She With is. only her being able to reach in and collect it. It's at that point that Amala steps forward and goes, my question, if this is the case, is why? Why now? That's the problem. She was near <sighs> indestructible before. And also, I think for a being of her type, being in a demiplane, as you describe it, would be incredibly boring for her, unless she she's... intends to use it as a more advanced layer on which to prey on other planes of existence. She is smart. <sighs> Hate smart undead. She yeah, is clearly been... How long smart has she and been... skilled. How long yeah. has she been around? Because, like, a while. She... Oh, yeah, because she was there with Farwell and. In her undead state, I am not we, that old. I know, but that was years ago. In her undead state, we estimate two thousand or so years. Wow, Fairly, yeah, that's you are a, a lot yeah. older than I realized. She's an eternal fae. What <laughs> old did you think she was? <laughs> Regardless, my theories <sighs> are either it's step one of a much more grander plan or step two or like no first theory she's it's either step one in a much more grander plan or she is being used yes By, after all you did say she was being driven her story or something was hatred or envy or something along those lines we would like to know which. Mm. What I would like to know is how she's called the Witch Queen. She was obviously connected to, well, the usual powers uh, at some point. How closely is she tied to the Fae Wild? Because she might be surviving on the fear of the people she are she is hunting. She was no hag. She was a witch, uh, simply a practitioner of arts. Depending on your point of view, she could be seen as a respectful arcanist. But back then, she was considered practicing of the evil arts. Well, right now There's we're no kind of going... For, for the moment, we're kind of going wait, around... Wait, as... wait, 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 wait. Yeah. We have... Farvel has a very neat spell he used to help me. Uh, legend law? Legend yes. Lore. Yes, you might be able to find more about her past and her story that way. Uh, I would recommend that tomorrow. you do so at the site of one of her events. I was about yes. to you say... You would have a weaker link here and I can guarantee you being that old will have resistances to such things. Yes. But yeah, at, at the, if we go to the site and then we can do some investigative work, like traditional, and we can also see if you can get any connection with Legend Lord. Regardless, until we get to one of her hunting grounds, what we're doing is just 
going in circles and speculating. Mm -hmm. This is why you need to rest well and prepare for the journey ahead. I shall leave you with a declaration of our alliance. A gift for each of you. This is the loop ball. Uh, <laughs> yeah. See you hey. Good bomb. Throughout our that. history in the Feywild, we have duels by which the loser gives a token to the winner. These accumulate in the trophy halls and treasure rooms of our kind. I have been permitted to take of some of these items and provide them to you as assets along your journey. First, she reaches behind the small of her back and pulls out a uh, small chalice. Uh, the chalice seems to be covered in a very thin... Uh, just pulling them out of her. Uh, just, she just... Yeah. It, just, just from, from behind the small of her back. <laughs> from her skirt. Uh, <laughs> the cup seems to have a thin... Uh, patina of condensation over it Um, and she uh, so much so that the touch of her skin you can see the uh, the difference in temperature she places the chalice and by chalice I don't mean like a big soup bowl chalice this is a small chalice it's ornate um, but understated Uh, it seems to have uh, small um, uh, aquamarine gems uh, along the length of it in a rotational symmetry. Um, and it looks understated, elegant, uh, very much a fey thing. Looks very unsummer. She says, this came from a duelist of the, sum- uh, of the winter court. It's a cup of living frost. Once per day to drink of the draft that would be summoned within it will allow you to take on a mantle of frost to protect yourself against ills. In mechanical terms, you drink this uh, as an action and you have um, Armor of Agathis second level cast upon you. Nice. I, prefer I will do my smart. usual thing and say, Simon, please DM me these items. I will DM you the items. Yeah. Yeah. I am still waiting for the last two sets of items that you created as I've not I'll been ma- able to create those yet. I will... I will uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to you before we sign off tonight. Um, yes, please okay. DM me all the items and I shall spend a few hours tomorrow creating sure. them all for everybody's inventory. Yay. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. She reaches behind the nape of her neck and pulls a warhammer <laughs> out. A one-handed warhammer. Kind of like a little monia thing going on. Uh, it looks like a lump hammer, basically. And uh, she says... This may be of use to some of you. Yeah, everyone just stares at Farewell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, this is also from the Winter Court. A hammer of frozen wrath. It works as with any other war hammer. However, when you strike true, critical, uh, <laughs> it has the ability to sunder armor. Uh, mechanical terms, uh, when you perform a critical hit from this, you can choose, instead of dealing damage, to get rid of any external armor effect. That includes shattering the armor that they're wearing. Oh, so if you're like, (laughs) buy all your AC, as long as it's not like natural armor of a brand, you can't... uh, It it, it depends, some natural armor as well. If it's a shell, uh, it will sunder the shell. That's really can, can you sunder the scales of a dragon then? Um, I would say probably not all of them. Hmm. But no, but it may a part. Have, get rid of may it have an effect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it would have an effect. I'm, I'm sure we'd do something like that. You can smog right. that some bitch. Smile. Yeah. He's got he's got he's got one one hit one weak point that we must strike with this <laughs> MacGuffin arrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Behold the MacGuffin. <laughs> the MacGuffin. <laughs> <laughs> Amala shoots a glance at Glory and oh. says, I suppose we should relieve ourselves of this, and pulls a staff from behind her back and lays it on the table. The staff looks awful. <laughs> it, looks, it is made 
of charred bone. <laughs> Dory's face. Like, uh. <laughs> she said, the staff itself tells you what it is. Picks it up from the table and tosses it at Glory. <laughs> she drops it. <laughs> the, second you, drop it. <laughs> the second you hold it, you hear, who is it? I am Glory. Who are you? Glory. An acceptable name. Are you <laughs> Fay, Glory? It's fine. No. Do you live? Do you have blood that pumps through your veins? Yes. Don't know then you this. and I, I may do this. great I don't things. I don't know about this. I don't know about this. I don't know about this. You don't, don't hear it. I don't know about this. <laughs> You may call upon the being inside this staff. It shall manifest in front of you. I'm afraid it's not too pretty. However, all those who look upon it will hate it. They will attempt to destroy it. Oh, it's like a oh. tank. <laughs> Someone tank. <laughs> Uh, this is Staff of the Poppet. It summons a zombie in front of you. Um, oh. Uh, which uh, creatures have to do a saving throw to not attack the Poppet. Mm -hmm. hmm. it, no, it's not summon a tank. A day. It's, um, what's those engineering things? Target dummies. It's yeah. Yeah. Summon target dummy. Yeah, crash test dummy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right there. Yeah, crash yeah. It. It's Buster. Uh, it's Mythbusters Buster. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yep. uh, yeah. Creatures have to do a save to attack anyone other than the poppet. Mm -hmm. uh, the downside is, is that the poppet, poppet. The poppet. Hello, poppet. Um, the poppet doesn't have a huge amount of hit points, uh, but it does have undead resilience. Oh, yeah. Right. Where, it, where it just doesn't die. Yeah. Where it, if, it, from... if it passes its save, it's not got great stats. But if it passes its save, uh, it goes to one hit point instead of zero. Interesting. Acceptable, despite the appearance. She opens, well, she balls her hand, opens it again, and there's a um, a bluish, uh, a, a silver ring with a bluish tinge. Uh, she places it on the um, on the table, and says, "This is the ring of thunder's grace. One of the storm lords lost this in a duel. It uh... allows." <laughs> it, it allows the bearer to throw their body uh, in a direction that they choose for quite some distance. However, it doesn't guarantee a safe fall. Um, as an action, when you're wearing this ring, you can propel your body 120 foot in any direction you of your choice. Yourself. <laughs> <laughs> The yeet. ring of yeet. Thunder. <laughs> yeah. Consequences, you throw yourself 120 foot up in the oh, air. We had... You do still have to deal with the consequences. I ha we we have turned I the kind... benefactor into a Bethesda game. Yes, <laughs> but we also have a cat who can land on four uh, legs. Yes, I, I, I have a four that has never been used. Question, if you use the ring, does it have an activation phrase? Sure, no, you just... You just choose. Oh, no, that, that, that's a shame, because if it has an activation phase, you could just be like, here, put on this ring. Now say this. <laughs> and just watch as like the evil person yeets himself into oblivion. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's there's a downside to this, this ring. Is it kid. throws you 120 foot. Not yes. less. It will always throw you 120 foot, so you have to deal with the consequences. <laughs> it's got, no, it's ping pong, ping ponging. <laughs> yeah, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> How long if, has she been up there? About 45 minutes. If, if I have like a climb speed, can I like latch onto a wall, Simon? If I, or is it? <laughs> oh, you can, you can, ab you'll hit the wall, but then you can absolutely latch onto it. Yeah. You just have to take the damage, and uh, I believe it's 
1d6 uh, for every 10 foot of wall that Ooh, you did yeah, not yeah. pass through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is, Up to this like is why. six. You no, that's walk. falling. Ten, this is being yeeted at speed into a wall. There is no upper limit. Yeah, there's. N yeah, and plus, I push you thirty bullshit. foot, <laughs> and you go ten foot, and then hit a wall. You get two d six damage for the twenty foot into the wall I tried to push you yeah. that didn't happen. If my level, if my level seven barbarian can tank the up the absolute top end of the limit on four damage, it's bullshit. It doesn't matter if he falls that top limit or falls 5,000 feet. He's mm. still got enough hit points to survive it. <laughs> it's yes. bollocks. It's why I subscribe to Matt's ruling well, of it all, where he was like, get me a bucket. <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, I go on the Gygax the... thing. It's got a linear acceleration. The graph goes like that. And the further you fall, the more fucked you are. <laughs> there, there is some uh, something called the like uh, what a is terminal it? velocity. There's also terminal true. velocity, yep. so there should be an upper limit. What is the terminal level. velocity of a PC that's made a bad decision? None. <laughs> it just keeps going. <laughs> yeah. and, and, sorry, and as far as I'm concerned, there's a point where you'll hit life, it and you'll just go super critical and go through. I the like floor. to imagine that as soon as as she brought this ring out, this entire conversation we've been having has been a character yeah just like about turbo velocity it's okay we yeah. the, there's two solutions here is the fact that it's even right now you can hit terminal velocity and hit the floor and you will never walk away from it <laughs> we got you we've got oh yeah excuse me i'll just throw the big 500 gold diamond that i have in my pocket and just blow that because you decided Vex to see how <laughs> How far yeah. you can fall. <laughs> she had to get over her, her uh, post-traumatic stress disorder of watching her best friend uh, chunky salsa herself against a rock and then because go, she, yeah, you know, sure, I'll do a cast. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if we're going to use the ring, we need to get some scrolls of slow fall. Because at least if you... Just for her. I have one. You can slow fall. Arcane parachute. Yeah. Arcane parachute. I can yeah. learn slow fall. We... There's you are slow fall. fall. I've got a scroll of feather fall that I've had since I don't know. We yeah, we yeah. got it so long ago. But I can also learn slow fall. I'm pretty sure. Is that an enhanced enchantment spell? You are slow fall. Yeah. <laughs> slow slow fall is uh, slow uh, fall feather fall. fall what the spell is? Uh, Arcane tricksters can learn that. It's definitely in your, yep. your wheelhouse to learn. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so, you know, I, the I question say is we, just we do we one day me. eclipse that can throw herself 120 <laughs> feet up in the air and then just is slow it, fall down? It's a new way of traveling, isn't it? All you need now know. is the uh, Avatar air glider. So it's yeah. just like yeet myself into the air and just drift. Look, yeah. is it any is it any worse than the fact that if it becomes dusk, she can turn herself into a bat and fly around? I I, mean, I have the bat that? thing, so I can yeet myself and then turn into a bat and just fly around. Uh, uh, if, have yeah. you seen what yeah, she's like level, yes. when it gets dark out there when we've stopped? She climbs onto the roof, jumps around, and flies around for forty five minutes. <laughs> oh yeah, my fucking coat had a thing now. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, it's just one of those moments you're processing the day and go, did I have wings earlier today? Oh, yeah, it's, it's just now, like, like, like sinking in. Oh, Finally. What was up with that? She closes her hand again, opens it up, and a crackling gem uh, appears. Uh, just a small crystal. She places it on, on the table where it, every now and again, gives an irritable crackle. Yeah, gem I know that feeling. Gem mm -hmm. of Storm's Vengeance. When someone strikes huh. you, you can power this gem with your life force and rebuke them. Just give me more more ways to fucking like to take sure. like just to get rid of my HP. <laughs> uh, we, in game terms, when somebody wounds. damages you with an attack, <laughs> you can choose to pick up any number of your unused hit dice roll them, and hit them with lightning damage equal to the result. <laughs> oh. uh, I think that's going to Aiden, then. <laughs> uh, that's absolutely going to Aiden. 
It's only the amount on the dice, not your constitution. No, no, I know, I know. Yeah. I know. You literally just pick up your hit dice and use it as it is effectively blood magic, and that comes from the Storm Lords uh, of yeah. Arcadia as well. Okay, so mm -hmm. Cup of Living Frost, Hammer of Frozen Wrath, Staff of the Poppet, Ring of Thunder's Grace, and Gem of Storm's Vengeance. And yes, I will give that to you before I sign off tonight. Nick. Also, I, I also with that I didn't just remembered. Very well. I, I, there's, I think you still have the hammer. There's a that head that just moves around and goes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you still need to give me back that hammer. Uh, oh, hold was on. Was that hammer right? It was like a, yeah, it was it was like a, a, it was, it yeah. was a mace. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fell reaches right. into his bag of holding and just kind of unceremoniously goes. Boom. And this is big family heirloom, mace. but sure. <laughs> Let's pick it up. Yes, you need to return that to the dust cold. Yeah, I do need to return that to the dust cold. <laughs> Simon, mm -hmm. would you mind remind me when was the first time we were in Skolra in the episode the thingy? Oh God, I haven't got that set of notes available. Okay, I'm just wondering because I just remember that it's been so long and I still have not been allowed to activate one of the things we talked about. We can talk about that. Um, yeah, this week coming. Uh, give me a shout and uh, yeah, nah. it could be that we missed it. Yeah. Nah, it's not that we missed it. It's just that these guys are stupid. They won't let me have fun. <laughs> nah, yeah, we're so we are so dumb for not letting you be like. Anyway, I, it, it, it sorry. is eleven o'clock. I so... did the trail off because I was like, wait, how long have I had that in the background? Oh shit! It's. Has I think to I know what you're about. Now. It's been a while, yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things of. Oh god! I just looked at my inventory list. I've got what? <laughs> my inventory. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a good thing you guys have all got bag of holding as part of being the green organization. Uh, yeah. Mm. Although they are basically just man sheds now, just full of shit. <laughs> we just like yeah, we just carry a house behind us. Yeah, Hermit. Right. A ring of slow fall might be a good idea to give Eclipse. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> a ring of immune from this particular consequence. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So oh, consequences. it is eleven o'clock, and so we're going to finish up here today. A great thank you to Rodrigo, Nick, Kate, Felicia, and Corinne for their story today. And as always, uh, as it was in the first episode, as it is in the hundredth episode, um, I'm Simon, and it's your, uh, it's my honor to be your DM. Um, we are going to raid because we need to raid more. And I'm hoping yeah. that a new acquaintance of mine is online. So mm -hmm. let's see if this is true. Uh, okay. No, they are not online at the moment. So, and in fact, there's not many people online at all. So anyone got any suggestions? Uh, let me see if there's anyone I, uh, I know. Check your Twitch. Check it. Check it. Yeah, I'm literally doing that right now. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah. Oh, Dylan, thank you for uh, coming and listening. Oh, Aww, hey, Dylan. Hi. <laughs> right. We will figure that out in the wash. Uh, but um, please stick around. Uh, after the credits, we will raid somebody. Um, until then, thank you, everybody, for turning up. Thank you very, uh, uh, very much for Seekian for uh, donating uh, those uh, those subscriptions. Uh, big thank you to Snipe you for donating those Twitch bits. Channel. Hmm? Go watch his Twitch. Go. Uh, yeah, what what Seekian's yeah. Twitch channel? It's S E A K E O N. Uh, follow him. He's a wonderful. Do human we have being. an SO yeah. command? Um, oh yeah, uh, I think it's. Just we a have had an thing. SO for him. He has had a shout out. But he, we can always give yep. him another cool. one as he deserves it. Cool. Prime's on it. The Prime cool. Prime is Thank freaking you. the best. Thank you. Um, Thank you for so, the yes. cut. We will thank find um, uh, somebody to raid, but thank you guys for your support and your continuing support. The Both here itself. in the chat, talking about the uh, the game in the chat, of course, inspires our imagination um, and allows us to uh, um, laugh about the game a lot more and, uh, and think of uh, more things. And also joining us on the Discord and talking about things on there. In fact, for the last couple of days, I've been writing a game that was proposed by Rattles and then everybody else picked up the baton and ran with it. And I was just like, oh, God, I'm writing a game now. Here we go. Uh, so uh, thank you for that. And thank you for the continuing uh, and always rewarding community that we have. Um, we're going to sign off now, but stick around for the raid. Good night. Good night. Good night.
Night, everyone. Night. Bye. Bye.